If you've watched some of my videos, then you may know that I'm not the biggest fan of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. I don't think it's a bad anime by any means, just one that never clicked with me. I do like aspects of it. For example, Joseph Joestar is one of my favourite anime characters of all time, and I did really like both Stardust Crusaders and Stone Ocean. But overall, this anime never really left too much of an impression on me, which I know will probably be surprising to hear. However, there has always been one part of Jojo that I always loved, and that was part 4. Diamond is Unbreakable is very close to being perfect in my eyes. It has some flaws which became more prevalent to me on my recent rewatch, but on the whole, I really love part 4. It's the one part of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure where the weirdness and wackiness of Jojo really felt at home instead of a distraction. The bizarreness of this series has never really been something that I enjoyed all that much. At times I have, but a lot of other times, especially in the earlier parts of the anime, it would feel like things would happen for no reason. And yes, I do know that's a core part of this anime's charm, but like I said earlier, this anime never really clicked with me. However, I think it really worked for Diamond is Unbreakable due to the setting and characters. Having part 4 take place exclusively in Mario was a fantastic decision in my opinion. It lends credibility to all the strange happenings as Mario is a strange place. It's kind of like how terrible things happen in Hawkins in Stranger Things. It makes sense for loads of weird things to happen in the same place. It also works due to the characters involved in this part. The characters are just weird in this part. And yes, I know the characters are weird in every part, but it again makes more sense for the characters here to be weirdos and do weird things. You have a serial killer who can't stop himself from murdering women. Of course he'd have a hand fetish and take a second to turn Koichi Sock the right side out once the battle is over. He's a psychopath. Just killing women is strange enough. Him having more peculiar behaviours is fitting. Or Kishibi Rohan being a mangaka. He's very invested in his work and basically does what method actors do so they can make the best product possible. All this anime does is push that method acting concept to its silliest point. It helps that Kashibi Rohan is the type of person who doesn't really care about others and their opinions, so he would not feel ashamed of any of his bizarre behaviour. There's also Joseph, who's now a senile old man. Of course he's going to do weird things. Even without the bizarreness of their personalities, they'd still probably be classed as weirdos in the real world. The point I'm trying to make is that, at least for me, the strangeness of Jojo was very hit and miss in the earlier parts of the anime. But in part 4, it just consistently hits. Since I've been talking negatively about Jojo's Bizarre Adventure so far, let's get all my negatives with part 4 out of the way first, so that I can talk about the plethora of positives afterwards. So the first issue with part 4 is that it doesn't have the best start. It's not a terrible beginning by any means, but it definitely takes some time for part 4 to find its groove, and that could be enough to turn some people off. Usually, people say that part 4 doesn't get good until Yashikage Kira shows up. And whilst it's true that part 4 reaches another level when the best villain in the entire Jojo anime shows up, I'd have to disagree with that sentiment. I think part 4 starts getting good around the time when Joseph is introduced into the part. It may just be me enjoying my favourite character returning, or it could be because Joseph's entrance marks Red Hot Chili Pepper's exit. Akira Otoishi is essentially the main villain for the first third of Diamond is Unbreakable, and let's not lie to ourselves, he really sucks as a character. You are more likely to remember some of the Villain of the Week characters in Jojo than you are to remember this guy. I think he has a cool stand, but he's a very forgettable character. I literally had to google his name and I watched this anime a couple of days ago. Another issue is that some of the Villain of the Week episodes in Part 4 aren't amazing. None of them are terrible, but not every episode is a winner, especially near the start of the season. Diamond is Unbreakable also suffers from being occasionally underdeveloped. For example, the relationship between Koichi and Yukiko. Their relationship is all over the place. It could have been really good, but instead just feels like Koichi all of a sudden changing his mind. I also wish that they developed Akiyasu's relationship with his brother more, or at the very least his dad, since his dad just disappears from Diamond is Unbreakable before making a return appearance right at the end. It also would have been nice to have seen more of Josuke and Joseph bonding, since they are father and son, and whilst Joseph doesn't disappear, his presence in the anime does decrease over time, and he doesn't even get to help take Kira down. My last issue of part 4 is more of an issue with Jojo in general, and it's that the anime can sometimes suffer from repetition. Specifically in part 4, it's to do with Kira's powers. One of the things that always annoyed me about Jojo is how pretty much all the main villains have time-related powers. That's why I love the simplicity of Kira's stand just being one that blows people up. That is, until near the end, where he ends up developing time powers, because of course he does. It's not really a Jojo main villain unless they have some way to manipulate time. Now I don't know the powers of the main villains in parts 7 and 8, but if they somehow end up messing with time, then I would not be surprised. 
It's annoying because Judge's Bizarre Adventure has some of the most creative character abilities in anime, so to see all the primary villains have some variation of time manipulation can get a little boring, at least for me. But that's it, I'm done, no more negatives, well no more negatives for Diamond is Unbreakable anyway, now we move on to the positives. First of all, I was really surprised by how good the animation was in part 4. Perhaps I'm misremembering, but I feel like the animation in Stone Ocean wasn't that great. It was mainly just still images with lip flaps. I know that criticism could be applied to a lot of anime, but looking back after watching part 4, I do think that Stone Ocean was a downgrade in animation quality. I'm just saying that here because I don't think I mentioned it in my Stone Ocean video, which I will link at the end of this one if you're curious of my opinion on the animated version of part 6. It could also just be due to Diamond is Unbreakable having a different director to Stone Ocean, but regardless of Stone Ocean's subjective animation quality, I think Diamond is Unbreakable looked really good. It still had those still image moments like Stone Ocean, but it worked for part 4 because these moments really accentuate the unusual vibe of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, and this is the real reason why I got tired of it in Stone Ocean, there's also plenty of moments in part 4 that are animated. Also, Diamond is Unbreakable has a lot of style in how it presents itself to the viewer. Some of the transitions in part 4 are fantastic and really fit the vibe of the show. Even in its weaker animation moments, I think Diamond is Unbreakable is able to keep viewers engaged through interesting shots and direction. One aspect of Judge's Bizarre Adventure that has always been good though is its soundtrack, and that's true here in part 4. In my personal opinion, and bear in mind that I haven't seen every anime created, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure has one of the best soundtracks in anime. It isn't the best, now that title goes to Bleach, but the anime does have a great soundtrack, especially for the Jojos and Kira too. I also think Part 4 is my personal favourite openings of the series. I know that people love the openings of Jojo, but they personally never fit my own subjective tastes, but I do love all three openings for Part 4. Crazy Noisy Bizarre Town, both versions, Chase and Great Days are all magnificent openings and I listen to them every now and then. However, by far the best aspect of part 4, and the reason that I love it so much, is the characters. Diamond is Unbreakable has the best characters in the series. They may not be as iconic as the characters of Stardust Crusaders, but this is definitely my favourite ensemble in Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. In fact, the characters actually improved on my rewatch. Whilst Joseph will always be my favourite and Jolene my second, with Jotaro clearly being the most iconic, Josuke was actually a much better protagonist than I remembered. I don't think he's a very nuanced character or even one with some layers, but I liked him a lot more than I thought I was going to. He's resourceful and smart and he may have my favourite stand out of all the protagonists so far. Crazy Diamond is such a versatile stand and it gets used in so many creative ways. It ends up making Josuke a fun character to watch fight. However, Josuke isn't the character that my opinion switched the most on when I was watching this anime. Maybe it's because I just watched Hajime no Ippo, and he shares a voice actor with Aoki, a character that I really liked, but Akiyasu was a lot more enjoyable on this rewatch. When I first watched Diamond is Unbreakable, I considered Akiyasu to be the weak link in the cast. There just wasn't all that much to his character, and he was often overshadowed by the other members of the core group. This time around though, I appreciated him a lot more. He has a nice, fairly simple arc of learning to be his own person that hit the landing with me this time around. Also, he gets a lot more moments to shine than I initially remembered. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Jotaro works so much better as a secondary character than a lead. He may be Jojo's most iconic character, but he was completely overshadowed by Joseph in part 3. In part 4, Jotaro sticks out a lot more and feels more interesting to me. He's clearly a bit more mature than he was before and feels like the group's powerhouse. He's the one that the rest of the group looks to for guidance and the one that they all rely on. The only negative about Jotaro in part 4 is that whilst he does get moments to shine, he's usually sidelined in favour of whichever character he got paired up with for that episode. Whilst these characters are really good, there are two standouts in the character department for me though. The first is Koichi. He could have been annoying because he has a fairly high pitched voice and shouts a lot, but I think he gets around it due to his accommodating personality. Koichi is a very nice person, but he gets scared very easily. Fortunately, he's able to get past this due to the heaps of courage at his disposal. He's brave, and when the situation requires it, he's able to step up. Rohan seems to hate everyone, but even he likes Koichi. And Jotaro, someone who seems hard to impress, even recognises Koichi's abilities. So much so that he made sure to give Koichi a holiday to Italy. The other character worthy of highlighting would be Kashibi Rohan. Rohan is a very confrontational individual. He doesn't get along with most of the characters, even going as far as to admit his dislike for them right to their face. Even when rescued by a character, he'll get annoyed at them. He's just kind of a douche, which is ultimately why I liked him. He also has one of my favourite stands in the entire series. One issue that I have always had with Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is the villains. I've just never particularly liked any of them. That is, until Yashikage Kira. Kira is just an amazing character and I really like that his motivations are as simple as just wanting to kill people. 
because that's how some people are. Toshiyuki Morikawa is one of my favourite voice actors in the industry. He has played so many popular characters such as Julius in Black Clover, both Ichigo's and Naruto's dad, Tozen in Bleach, Paul Greyrat in Mashoko Tensei, Naraku in Inuyasha, Volg in Hajime no Ippu, Griffith in the original Berserk, Bonjud in Maiden Abyss, and now in One Piece, Boris in One Punch Man, damn he's voiced a lot of villains. Anyway, I think his performance as Yoshikage Kira is arguably his best. He injects the man with such vileness and narcissism. <laughs> you can't help but both hate and love the guy. The simpleness of the character is what made him interesting to me. I also just love how weird he is and also how smart he is. Man, he is such a great villain and he really elevates part 4. It's not just the main characters in Diamond is Unbreakable that I think are fantastic, it's the side characters too. Generally, I don't remember any of the side characters in the rest of Joseph's Bizarre Adventure because they usually show up for an episode or two and then just disappear. That's sort of true for part 4 as well, but every now and then, due to the static setting of part 4, these side characters will return and become integral parts of that episode. It made episodes more interesting as you were never sure what to expect when these characters returned, especially after how things went with Shigechi. Diamond is Unbreakable undeniably has the best side cast of characters in the anime, in my opinion, although I do admit that's sort of by default. Like its villain, the story in part 4 is simple yet effective and primarily focuses on villains in the weak style episodes which overall work in this anime's favour. Having Kira be in the background whilst occasionally coming to the forefront was a wise decision as it lent stakes to the second half of the season whilst enabling the anime to still have some silly, fun moments. Diamond is Unbreakable is absolutely carried by its characters who once again have fantastic character designs and beautiful soundtracks to accompany them and features the best villain in the entire anime up to this point in time. Diamond is Unbreakable isn't perfect, but it was really close to me personally. Before you go, allow me to do the stereotypical YouTuber thing and ask you to like, comment and subscribe because it would genuinely really help me out. Anyway, have a great day and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.